Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Now, I believe that our deepest desire in this world is for love. And I agree wholeheartedly with the Apostle John as he wrote this letter 2,000 years ago. We call it 1 John, especially where he says, this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. And the truth is that God has been showing off his love since the creation of the world. Like the nature of God, what God is made up of, has always been and will always be love. As a pastor, I often get the question, how can God be good, loving, and all-powerful, and yet this world is so evil and apathetic and broken? And I think to answer that question, we've got to go back to the beginning of the story, like right back into the first three chapters of the Bible when God created the world, because when he did it, originally, it was in perfect harmony. There was no brokenness. There was no relationship drama. Imagine that. No tears, no disappointments, no anxiety. And if we read through the story in Genesis 1 and 2 at the beginning of the Bible, we see a God who delights in us who puts us in a garden called Eden, which literally means the Garden of Delight. I think there's a reason he named it that. 1 John 1.1 1, 1 says that Jesus existed in that garden in the beginning, meaning that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? Three persons, one God, and all of their glory, holiness, and love were present in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Delight, fully sharing with Adam and Eve their joy and their eternal life as one God in three persons. Obviously, we don't live in that garden of delight anymore, right? We live in a world of darkness now. There are broken relationships between us and God, others, creation. I mean, even our relationship with ourselves, that's broken. And ever since sin entered into the world in Genesis 3, we find ourselves settling for a lot less than God and his love. We strive after a good life for ourselves with less pain and less loneliness. And all we're really doing is covering ourselves up, right? We're trying to hide our shame and our true feelings. And we live in a world that is seriously desperate for love. I mean, look at movies, music, books. I mean, online, every social media platform, right? Love is pervasive. I mean, we find the word love everywhere. But in the world we live in, we must be careful that we don't settle for a fake imitation of love. Now, some turn to dating. They make that their ultimate goal. Others, they turn to casual sex. Many of us, we, we've turned to pornography. All trying to satisfy our appetite for love with things that really only make us more hungry for the real thing, right? I mean, in addictions, you can tell if you're lost in an addiction, if you just keep doing something and doing something and doing something. And the more you do it, you find it has decreasing satisfaction. That's an addiction. What if we stopped settling for fake idols? What if we started chasing after the God who is love? I mean, the real thing's out there, I believe that. But the source of true love can't be found in a song, definitely can't be found in porn can't be found in a rocking dating relationship or even in a kiss. I dare say it can't even be found in a perfect marriage with, with there's not any perfect marriages, by the way. I mean, the real source of love is God and God alone. My daughter, she's nine. She reminds me of this truth. I mean, that God created us 
to love and to be loved because we're made in his image. My daughter's name is Eden, which means to light. Through her dancing, her coloring, playing, I mean, just wanting to cuddle with me on the couch, everything she does uh, is not perfect, but she does, she, she reminds me of delight. She reminds me of God's ridiculous love for me. And going back to 1 John 4, 9, where John declares that you and I have seen the true love in the person of Jesus. God showed how much he loved us, right? By sending his one and only son into the world, that we might have eternal life through him. God sacrificed the life of his one and only son, Jesus Christ, so that you and I could experience life, so that we could once again, like Adam and Eve, delight and enjoy God now, right now, and then moving into eternity. We're calling this four-week series Choose Love, simply because God chose us far before we ever chose Him. I mean, He loved us before we loved Him. And we can choose right now, in this moment, we can choose every day to respond to this love and receive what our souls most long for, which is a relationship with the God who created us. And yet, I mean, even from the beginning, this God who loves us so deeply, he doesn't force us to choose this love. I mean, his invitation to relationship has always been a gentle invitation. I love that about him. You can choose not to love God back. I resonate deeply with what Max Lucado says. He says, God does not send people to hell. I mean, he simply honors their choice. Hell is the ultimate expression of God's high regard for the dignity of man. He has never forced us to choose him, even when that means we would choose hell. I think one of the reasons God put two trees in the Garden of Eden was because he wanted free children, free to joyfully choose him. He didn't desire a world of slaves where their only choice was to love him. He doesn't want us to be robots. He wanted to create free men and women in his image of true love. I mean, he's still, just so you know, he's unchanging. He's the same God. He's not gonna force you to break up with somebody who's the center of your world and, and that relationship has spiraled right into an unhealthy pit. He's not gonna make you stop looking at pornography. He's not gonna make you stop having casual sex. I mean, his invitation is a gentle one. And if you're anything like me or any other human that I know, I mean, you've doubted, right? You've doubted God's love. I mean, I've wrestled countless times with this simple truth that God knows me completely and he loves me just as I am. I don't have to put on any kind of show for God. My daughter, Eden, like I said, she loves to dance but she does not have to get all dressed up and put on some show to earn my love as her dad. She can come just as she is. And I love her deeply for just who she is to me. She's my daughter. And God's love has made us sons and daughters. That's the invitation, right? Through Jesus' life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, that right now, the same Jesus who walked the earth and showed us who God really is, he sits in the throne room in heaven, right next to the Father. And we can come humbly and honestly before God. And because Jesus covers every sin, right? Past, present, future, through Jesus alone, we can experience life to the fullest. And yet, we often settle for so much less. We often choose hell when heaven really is an option. And all of us have been tricked. We're confused about how to live life to the fullest, which that was the question in the New Testament when Jesus was on the scene. How do I get eternal life? It wasn't some heavenly destination someday. It was right now. How do I experience life? And like people back then, like people of all time, we've chased after acceptance and popularity. We've achieved it at times, but, but it just left us wanting more. We've looked lustfully. I mean, we've really, we've looked at people and we've objectified them as objects for our personal desire. It didn't leave us full of love. I mean, it just left us empty and hungry for more. What is this craziness? 
What is this delusional activity where we chase after money and popularity and power and sex like time and time again? When will we stop choosing cheap imitations of love? When will we start choosing the real thing? This letter of 1 John, it ends with this challenge at the very end of the letter. The Apostle John, the Apostle of Love, he says, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. And I believe John ends the letter this way because we simply don't drift towards things that satisfy our deepest longings. It's gonna take intentionality, it's gonna take resilience, it's gonna take community. God's love is available. It's pursuing every person on this planet. If you're sitting there right now or standing there, however you're watching this and you're thinking, yeah, but I've screwed up too much. I mean, he's not really pursuing me. Yes, he is. He is especially fond of you, each and every one of us. There's absolutely nothing we can do or not do to make God love us more or less. And although he doesn't need us to write, accept him, he doesn't need us, definitely he doesn't need us to forgive him or care for him. He wants to do those things to us. He wants us to be accepted by him. He wants us to be forgiven. He wants to care for us. He's constantly offering to us acceptance, forgiveness, and care for our souls. We're desperate for this. I mean, today, amidst all the options, there remains an invitation, an open invitation right now to us all to make God the center of our lives to come back to the Garden of Eden. And even if we decide today that we wanna keep pursuing the things of this world, we wanna keep settling for less than what God has for us, even if we straight up yell out at the top of our lungs, I reject your invitation, God. His message for us today and every day is, well, I choose you. I still love you. To choose love means to choose God, for God is love. He's the very definition of it. He's not far off, and his invitation back to delight and back to true love, it stands today. What will you choose?